Nico Porteous. Well, I've been looking forward to this, and I hope you as an audience are too. Just run you through a few facts and figures before we introduce young man. Uh, <clears throat> finished second in the opening World Cup freestyle half pipe this season, then missed the next two World Cups back to back in Calgary after testing positive for COVID, returned to win the fourth World Cup of the season, then headed to the X Games. And this is where it gets really good. One gold in the in the free ski super pipe event, defending his title. So that's back to back X Games goals. Then on to Beijing, of course, where he wins gold in the super pipe. No events since then. He's been uh, free skiing and filming in Europe and Colorado. Sounds like it's the perfect life, doesn't it? And uh, joins us now, Nico. Welcome to the platform, mate. Yeah, good day. Thanks for having me on. Um, geez, that intro really uh, sums up the season. It's sort of crazy to hear that because I haven't really dissected it myself, to be honest. So, um, yeah, that that um, yeah. Thank you for the intro, and uh, it's an honour to be on. Look, it's just you know I'm reading out just some of the achievements. I mean, and now you know these these just go higher and higher and higher, and 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 this is almost like a dream sort of state, I suppose, for you in terms of. What I'm trying to say here is that all the things as a kid, all the things over the last few years that you've just worked so hard for, that you've actually tried so hard to attain, I'm just reading them out and they're on a big list now. Yeah, um, I think that's still uh, still taking some time to think in, uh, sink in, to be honest. Um, you know, it's been such a crazy past, I guess, you know, five years, but especially the past two have just been um, absolutely wild. You know, um, last year with World Championships and X Games and, um, learning all these new tricks, and then this year with X Games again, the Olympics, and um, it's sort of everything has sort of just come together in the past like two years. And and like you said, these are all my childhood dreams and what I wanted to achieve as as a freestyle skier, coming um, you know all all before I really uh, was you know barely twenty, which is crazy. I did not expect that ever in my life, and and um, yeah, I'm sitting here still. Um, dissecting all of that and and uh, yeah it's a pretty crazy feeling yeah because I want to ask you so many questions and I hope I get them all kind of in the right order here but as soon as you're saying that to me and you talk about the last couple of years I mean straight away what, what sort of pricks my my mind is that the margins are so fine but you but they're you know absolutely incremental when it comes to you you must know how much better you're getting I mean all of a sudden you can land stuff you can try stuff you can you can, I suppose, stretch out that little bit more and it's actually working. Like, how conscious are you of all of that? And, and, and how big are those margins to get from fourth or fifth to getting a gold medal? Yeah, I think, well, in our sport, you know, we, we have 10 people in the finals and um, any one of those 10 could win on the day. And so I think it's about, you know, this year we had some really, really tough conditions at events. Um, and, you know, if you're watching in, in Beijing, you would have seen that we had some really horrible conditions. And that was sort of the story of the season. And so um, at this point, uh, especially this season, it was it was a big strategy-based se season, you know, skiing um, really strategically well and, and uh, picking the right runs on the day. And, um, you know, I used my support team to, to um, help me do that. You know, my coaches... Um, my coach Tommy, um, my main coach, and then uh, obviously peers around me, such as my brother Miguel, and um, yeah, we just sort of lean on each other and, and make the right decisions. But uh, in good weather, you know, it, it, it um, you just have to be the best skier on the night, you know, and and um, whether you know that's doing your tricks more often than the other competitors, you know, or whether it's um, yeah, just little things like that, you know, doing them more often, doing them in the week, you know, more often than other people, maybe building up slower so that you're more used to the half pipe or it's just about doing every single little one percenter that you can to make sure that um, you are the best skier on the night. So there's quite a science to it, isn't there? That's what I'm hearing here. And also, there, you know, there's, there's, there's definitely... A plan that has to take place like for example i'm sort of you know thinking okay i'm serving for wimbledon here do i absolutely bash my first serve at 200k or do i just hold it back to 180 to make sure i get a good first serve in that's the kind of comparison that you're making or that's the parallel that you're actually drawing aren't you exactly yeah yeah exactly and you know it's like a i wouldn't say it's quite as hectic as a tennis match where it's such a long process you know but we do have three runs um and so it is it is about um you know, ma managing those three runs. So maybe you you work really hard in training so that you, the run that you have, like your first run, would be 
would still do really, really well, but it gives you a platform to build off into your second two runs. You know, there's some events that we use that strategy. There's other events where we just rock up and it's just do the best run that you possibly can because, you know, why not? If, you if you know, if, if um, at the end of the day, you're trying to better yourself and you're trying to ski at your best. And, and so, um, yeah, you might as well just give it your best shot. And if it doesn't work out, well, then it doesn't work out and you tried your best. And that's just the beauty of our sport is that there, there's that risk, you know, sort of like gambling in a way. When does it when does it get to the stage though where you're actually getting so good and you know that you can actually beat all these other guys on the day, and it becomes it must get into a higher degree of seriousness, and I suppose is what I'm trying to get at because the prize is so big. Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually really thought about it like this to be honest, you know, because because it has only just really happened in the past two years, and and um, even then there's still there's still, you know, any one of those top 10 can do well on the day. And I think that's what is, um, I think a lot of sports people will agree with me is that you tend not to think about that sort of stuff when you're in the moment, you just worry about yourself and what you can do. And, and, you know, you, you trust that if all your preparation is, has, uh, if you've done the right preparation and, and, um, you're skiing well, or you're doing your sport well, well then, um, if you're in a good spot, things are probably going to go well for you on the day, you know, and, and you can't really worry about what the other people are up to. You know, we're in a judge sport. We, we're um, pretty much our, our competitions are decided on, on um, other humans opinions. So uh, you can't control that. And so you just have to focus. It's on like, yourself. I was going to say, it's like you're competing against yourself, but you're also competing against all of these other athletes, obviously as well. It's kind of unusual like that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's different. And and um, that's the cool thing about us what is there's no rules and there's no criteria. There's no rule book. It's just you and your heart and the half pipe and you just do your best. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, a couple of absolute superstar years. This is Nico Porteous with his gold medal winner, X Games and Olympic Games. I'm going to keep saying that, mate, because every time I say it, I start <laughs> smiling. I've been very I've been very privileged, very fortunate myself in my job, Nico. I said I've gone to a few Olympic Games and I've been and I've seen New Zealanders win gold medals. And I just yeah. want to take you back there and take everyone back there. When that's around your neck, when that mm -hmm. flag goes up that pole and that national anthem plays, I get shivers actually thinking about it now. And I just witnessed it. You're actually on that podium podium feeling that. Try and explain to us what that what that moment is like. I think like it's genuinely sort of giving me a bit of the chills right now because that is that is like that is that's like one of the proudest moments of my life because every single sacrifice that you made every single time you didn't want to maybe go training you didn't want to go to the gym or you didn't want to you know leave home in that moment everything becomes worth it you're standing there with your closest friends um and unfortunately not family this time around but yeah, just that moment of hand over your heart, standing on the top of the podium, Olympic gold medal around your neck, singing the national anthem while all your teammates and friends are cheering you on and, and um, you know, 100% supportive of you is incredible. And, yeah, this is sort of the first time I really put that feeling into words because it is so, so special and it's, and it's something that is... Um, so hard to describe unless you've actually been there and experienced that because it is so um i don't know it's it's so strange and so weird but it is the best feeling ever you know and it's lovely hearing you hearing you say that and, and obviously hearing how much it means to you too because i mean i've just been there you know on the sideline as a you know working and yet at the same time i remember you know watching hamish carter win and watching sarah win and watching robert dell win and watching the twins win and that and I'm not name dropping, but it just it it felt like I was part of it as well. It made it made yeah. me feel incredibly proud to be a New Zealander. That's what I'm trying to trying to sort of get at. And, and I suppose for you standing there, I mean, it's it's almost like it was the first time I ever felt like that's where I'm from. This is where I actually from. I know what country I'm from. Did it did it feel like that too? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely did. It, it, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have that feeling um, in uh, Korea in 2018, but this. And, and to, to wear that, like, I know it sounds a bit cliche and every single New Zealand Olympic team athlete will say it, but to wear the silver fern on the chest is is really an uh, honour. And and uh, it comes with this this um, this pride and uh, 
and sort of mana and energy that that uh, you know has been carried throughout previous Olympians and it's not until you actually do put on a New Zealand uniform and represent at an Olympic Games let alone stand on a podium singing your national anthem it, it is it's such a um, mystical feeling I guess is the best way to describe it because it is, it's just this power there that you don't know is there until you actually feel it you know and um, that is yeah it, it's, it's so hard to describe unless you know and you've been there and you've, you've um, you know seen that on um, the sideline yeah yeah yeah, no, it's no, no. Beautifully right, right. put, though. Beautifully it's, put. It's the same thing, you know. It, it's it's New Zealand is a small country. We're such a small nation, and and um, everybody there supporting the New Zealand team feels that. You know, we're only a country of five million people, and um, you know that's the size of some cities overseas. And and you look at the the um, yeah the pride and and yeah the sense of pride that Kiwis have. Um, Sorry, I'm sort of just rambling on because it's so. I'm I'm Not trying really. to put it into words. Look, it's exactly what I think people want to hear as well. Because for all of us numbies who sit on the other side of the television and yell and scream, mate, who dream of ever wearing a silver fern, that's how I would hope that I would have felt if it ever happened to me. That 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 that's and it's all intangible stuff. I know it's hard to put into words and describe, but but that's all we need is that indication that says, yeah, man, I feel like Superman. I put this on, I feel like Superman. Yeah, but but then again, it's you know we're no different. Like we're no different to anyone that you know puts on a the supporters t shirt or puts on um, an All Blacks jersey and goes to the All Blacks game. You know, like you get that sense of of pride and belonging, um, and that is that is anyone that wears the fern. Not you know, it's not only us athletes and and um, you know the the. Um, yeah, the athletes at the game. It's everyone that wears that fern, and that's what makes it so, so special. Nico, so I don't know how much you can recall it just instantly right now of your last run, but, you know, part of, part of the beauty of when you're sitting there watching it on TV, you get all the camera angles and things, and I just remember vividly, actually, like uh, when Aaron had that nasty fall, which meant that you got gold, um, mm. the camera flashed to you, and the look on your face was probably more concerned for him, and I suppose, you know, that's what I'm asking you about is, as opposed to, wow, I've just won a gold medal. Your first natural reaction seemed to be, oh, my God, what's happened to him? Yeah. Um, that, well, I think that's sort of just like a uh, natural reflection of of um, how much of a family we are on tour. You know, um, the camaraderie which we share is something that is, is really, really special. You know, we, we all share the same passion uh, and that is skiing and, and half pipe skiing. And we travel around going to all these uh, competitions and, and risking our body um, every single time we go out skiing. And I think that really helps us bond and connect um, as, as a group and, and um, as a family in a, in a way, um, you know, we, we are in a small industry and, and um, you know, we do, we do share the same passion and um, you know, in moments like that, um, that was one of the hardest, I think that was, that was probably one of the hardest moments um, that I've felt in a long time, but because you, you're seeing your friend um, go down and be injured in the bottom of the pipe. But then at the same time, you've just like pretty much realized and achieved your dream that you've worked so hard towards. And and to have those two big emotions completely yeah. opposite of each other at yeah. the same time yeah. crossing over, you don't know what to think. And and um, you would you would have if you watch it again, like from from memory. I mean, I could be wrong, but um, if you watch it again, you can sort of see me go through waves of like, oh, he's injured. Damn, that's my friend. Like, I hope he's okay. To oh my goodness, I've sort of just realised that I just won gold but I got to contain myself because I have to be a good sportsman sportsman, you know, have to show good sportsmanship because that's my friend. And, and I'm going like up and down and, and it was, it was wild that, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't have expected it to be like that, but, but um, it was, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. She says an awful lot about you, young man. It really does. And your parents would be wrapped to hear you say that. And I think everyone that actually is, you know, that surrounds you be wrapped to hear you say that as well. Can you put yeah, I think, a qualification? I think, Sorry. The, 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 what, why, like, mum and dad have always said to me, you have to be not only 
a good loser, but you have to be a good winner. You have to, you know, like you have to be a good sport when you lose and you have to be a good sport when you win. And, and uh, that is something that has always stuck with me. Um, and, and I think in that moment, yeah, I think mum and dad would have probably been pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, and that parents, people. Yeah. <laughs> we always say, we always say, don't we, that, you know, you look at it, you look at it, you know, a young person and, and the first thing I think is, you know, how well raised and, you know, congratulations to the parents. And I want to get onto that and all the support yeah, yeah, and all the financial support that they've given you over the years as well. Yeah. What you're describing, though, is you're describing that it's almost like you're a team traveling around the world, but you all compete as individuals. And, and I remember Tom Walsh saying this to me as well. He said, it's such a bizarre sport, shot put, he said, because we all know each other. We all compete in the same places. It's kind of like this little traveling circus goes around all over the place. Yet, you know, you're competing against your best friend. Kind of, a, you know, there are not many sports like that. No, there's not. Um, and, and um, you know, skiing is... is uh is exactly the same as shot put in a way, except we have, um, you know, the risk, the risk factor of, of that. We all understand that at any moment, any one of us could get injured and, and um, you know, we have had people die in our sport and it is just the harsh reality of what we do. It, it, it's risky and, and um, yeah, we're putting our bodies on the line. And so I think we all understand that collectively as a group and, and it does give that sort of family um, vibe off, you know, um, but I, I would say that, you know, when we do compete, everyone gives each other space, you know, it, it's, it's um, from, from when practice starts before the comp until third run, um, it's, you know, everyone gives each other space. I wouldn't say that anyone's competitive or nasty towards other people at all, but we all just respect that this is competition time. This is when the real job is and we need to give each other space sort of thing. Um, yeah. But then Taking after, and, That's what it is. yeah, exactly. And after and before it's all great times. We're all laughing and having a good time. But um, yeah, when it comes to business time, it's definitely like go time for sure. Can you put a qualifier on it for us? This is just one of them dumb sports questions, mate, where, you know, my generation that you grow up in, in an Olympic medal for so many of the sports here, that's the absolute pinnacle which is why it frustrates me when they put something like tennis at the Olympics, because tennis will never, the Olympic medal will never mean the same as a grand slam. And to me, the Olympic medal has got to be what the Olympic medal is meant to be. However, you've got the X Games as well. And I know that for your generation, I mean, I, my boys are 21 and 19. So, you know, the X Games to them is just such an enormous achievement. And then you've got the Olympic gold medal. Do they sit side by side mentally on your, on your tabletop? Do they? Yeah, I, I would say they, they do sit side by side, you know. Um, for me, the – I'll start with the Olympics. For me, the Olympics is in, like we said, the public's mind and, and um, you know, the media – not that you're doing it for anyone else other than yourself, but, but what happens at the Olympics is completely life-changing moment, whereas um, – and, and – and, I think because it's only once every four years, that really makes it special as well. You have one shot every four years to do your best. Um, and it all leads down to this one moment. And and you definitely have different nerves. Like like they always say, oh, just treat it as a normal comp, but it's not a normal competition. Like for the for example, the first round in qualifying, I was so jittery and and so weirdly shaky, something that I hadn't felt in so long. Um, and it just took one run to get under my belt to be like, oh, okay just remind myself that we're just skiing, you know, because it does feel like that. There's so much attention on this one event. Um, whereas X Games is something that I've grown up watching. It was, it was, you know, the core skier in me is, is, is X Games because it's um, all the greats have done the X Games, won X Games. Um, so many world's first have been done there. Um, it's been happening since the since the late nineties and or mid nineties and um, sort of when freestyle skiing and, and action sports really started to take off, you know. Uh, and so, you know, watching the likes of um, you know Tony Hawk or Travis Pastrana, um, those all time action sports greats in X Games growing up, um, X Games definitely holds uh, a very very similar uh, value in my mind to the Olympics. Nico Portis is with us on the platform, ladies and gentlemen. X Games gold winner uh, and been defended his title Olympic Games gold in Beijing. 
what has he left to achieve for you? I know that it's probably a dumb question, but it's at such a young age. I mean, you know, you've climbed Everest, you've climbed Everest again. What do you keep doing? Do you keep doing what Sean White did and just go back and try and do five of these things? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to put it. I mean, I'm, after 2018, I mistakenly put a number on them. And that was stupid. That was me being 16 and 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 thinking I could do this forever because I was on top of the world sort of thing. But, um, you know, there definitely is some more things that I want to achieve um, in terms of results and, and competitive skiing. But with with uh, and, and definitely another Olympics um, for sure. But there is one thing that um, skiing you know, is it, so unique about skiing is the fact that you can have a career in competitive skiing, but you can also have a comp uh, a career in um, um, filming. So creating video parts, filming for for movies, um, and and that's a really really cool avenue that I can see myself going down, say, in four years' time, or um, maybe a bit longer. Who knows what what happens? But um, that's just a for me that appeals to me because it's um it's another creative outlet you know it, it's a it's a completely different world of of um going and working really really hard for your one five second clip you know like you go out you work through the storm you'll build the jump or you'll hike the face to ski the line for a five second clip and it's sort of like a condensed um a condensed competitive build up but all for like something that may not even work out, you know, and, and that really appeals to me because it's the hard work and it pays off way quicker, you know, like it pays off within you'll put in this crazy amount of work for, for um, a week and you'll get this sick shot that you can forever look back on and be like, damn, that's something that I work towards. I mean, you can do that in competitions for sure, but the filming is, um, yeah, it just really appeals to me in, in a new in a different creative way. You get to see the world. You get to do what you love doing. I want to go back to your parents because obviously, you know, mum and dad have put an enormous amount. I mean, I, I don't think you could ever put a price on it. And I don't mean just a, a dollar price. I'm just talking about the emotional investment, the, the time and support, the belief and the confidence that they have, have, have given you. Could you actually sit down at some stage, do you think, and actually write it down and go, oh, it's actually cost this amount of money? Or is it not, is it not something that, I mean, relevance is not the right word. I hope you know what I'm kind of getting at here because yeah. it's something that, as I say, you can you can put a dollar figure on, but that dollar figure is actually not the actual full price of what it actually is that's gone into this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm so, so lucky that I have the most insanely supportive parents um, in the world. They're, they're so, so supportive, but they're not blindly supportive. They always make sure that they're not just, doing this and throwing all their time and that they're making sure that they're keeping me on the right track. They're keeping me working hard and, and not in a pushy way, not in a pushy, you know, sporting parent or anything, but they are just the most genuinely supportive and interested parents I could ever ask for. They've um, sacrificed so, so much for myself and my brother to be where we are today. And, and I think the biggest thing, I mean, I would say like I'd pay them back and I, and, and, and I'd, and I'd, um, you know, pay them back financially, but yes, you can pay them back financially, but first off, they wouldn't let me do that. And yeah. secondly, it's not the financial part that is the, this is, this is such a tricky question, but I guess what I'm trying to say is the biggest way that I can show them that I'm thankful for their support is by taking advantage of every single opportunity that comes my way and working the absolute hardest I can because they've worked so hard to get me where I am now that I owe them the fact that I need to put every single ounce of my energy into this to be the best skier that I possibly can be and to just be the best person that I can be because um, I feel like that that's what I owe to them in return for their support and um, yeah, their belief in me. Where does the single-mindedness of inspiration and determination come from? At such a young age to have that, it's just, I mean, it's extraordinary to listen to. I used to play a lot of competitive squash. So Susan Du Bois is a very good friend of mine. Again, I'm not name-dropping at all, yeah. mate. But, um, no, no, no. You know, the fact, the fact that Susan had to go around the world and do this all on, on her own, on her own back, and be so motivated. You know, we hear from athletes all the time that, oh, the coach has lost the dressing room. 
yeah, I mean, you are the dressing room. You know, I mean, so how do you actually, how do you keep that? How do you maintain that fire? And that, and that says, if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. I mean, this is the, to me, the ultimate sporting attitude in the world that you just have to take all the responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I think it's comes down to like the people that I've been surrounded by growing up, you know, like my parents, my coach, my brother. I've always had such good role models in front of me and such good examples of of people working hard, you know, like I'm constant I was constantly surrounded by my dad going and working six weeks at a time over in Australia just so that um, you know, they could they could live and and um help me with my skiing and, and because I've seen those sacrifices and seen those hard that hard work and hardship, um, and it's I've been constantly surrounded by it growing up. I um, am instantly inclined to to do that myself and and to um, and to be thankful for that because um, it's not it, I'm in such a privileged opportunity and and I think the more that you understand how privileged you are in certain situations, the the harder you you work in those situations because you realize that not everyone has this opportunity and this opportunity is not going to be there forever. So you might as well bloody grab it by the balls and and um, and give it a good twist and work hard and, and show those people that have believed in you from day one and supported you that, um, that you know, um, you've earned that support and, you, and you've earned that, um, yeah, I guess that support and belief. You probably, and I don't know how to say this probably, it's just kind of a passing comment, mate, but you're probably more well known for what you're doing overseas than you are in New Zealand. I mean, I know that, you know, when it comes around to Olympics and things like that, obviously your names and lights here, but then again, in between those competitions, does that ever bother you? Does that ever worry you? And is that ever going to change? Well, in terms of like being known or? Yeah. Like, um, no, you just get so much more publicity, you and Zoe overseas. I mean, I read things and I mean, it's just that, you know, you're more like if you played rugby and you were at this level in New Zealand, you'd be, you know, you'd be, you wouldn't walk down the street kind of thing. But at the same time, every four years, people get to know you. But uh, in between times, I mean, how much, you know, how much attention is actually given? Is it, is it, is it enough in your book? Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, no attention would be enough. You know, I'm, I'm not doing it for anyone else. I'm doing it for myself, you know, and, and it's because it's my passion and it's my, um yeah it's what i love to do and, and and um it's crazy when you when you go to events and people are wanting to you to sign stuff or um you know you come back home and and people are again wanting to take photos and and it's it's crazy like that is that is wild and and um i'd never thought that i would ever be in that situation um but yeah it's it's um Something that is so crazy, but at the end of the day, it's like, and I'm thankful for all that, and and that support is amazing. But at the end of the day, you know, like this is this is me, and this is my passion, and and um, I would still be skiing and still be loving it if it wasn't for all of that, you know. Um, but I just really, you know, people think, oh, why why do you take the time to to do, um, you know, to message people or to um, to ski with people and it's because at the end of the day like i'm a normal person they're normal people like there's no reason for me to be above them or like higher on a pedestal just because i've achieved some things or or got some results like it's you know i'm no different to what to what you know um to who they are and and they've taken the time to approach me and, and to talk to me and then um i feel as if it's only right that i give them the time back and and um Yes, it's it's really really cool and, and it's absolutely crazy um, to have you know little kids coming up to you and, and like because I was definitely in that position one day and yeah. and um, yeah it, it's pretty special. So like somebody, I mean somebody could sort of like send you something on Instagram, some wild thing that they've just done and going, I'm going to be here when you are there. Can I come skiing with you? And, and you've said yes. I mean, what a buzz! That's like yeah. that's like. A, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of thinking of my favourite football teams, and somebody saying to me, "Yeah, Mark, come around, you know, kick a kick a ball with us after after practice or something." <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I definitely don't do it all the time, but like, no, of course not. When I do have time, yes, or like I'm up the hill, I'm skiing with, I'll ski with some of the Groms, or like, you know, just have a yarn to them, or or um, you know, try and reply to to um, messages on Instagram when I do have time, and and. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just sort of I feel as if I owe that for them showing the support to me. 
Look, uh, we, I'm going to wrap this up only because I could sit here and talk to you for another half an hour at least, mate, but I know you've got other things to do. Your downtime, what do you do with it? You're in, you know, do you ever pine for summer? I mean, do you actually ever, ever think at any stage, I'm going to take these off, I'm going to stop this, I'm just going to lie on a beach for two months? I mean, does that go through your head? Oh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> in the in the brute of um, you know, in winter, in the middle of winter when it's bloody cold and you're just freezing, um, you definitely do think about summer. But uh, at the end of the day, it's like I love skiing and I love being in the snow. And there'll be plenty of time when I've finished skiing to to go and sit on a beach and um, and enjoy the summer. But when I do get um, to do non snow activities, I'm I'm skateboarding a lot. I'm uh, mountain biking as much as I can. I'm um, surfing, diving, fishing. Um, just just love being outdoors and and going on missions and um, sort of being out of my comfort zone is something that I really enjoy. And so um, I try to get get out as much as I can. Do you have time to have a I don't know, a girlfriend, relationship, those kind of things? I mean, or does it have to be somebody that's touring with you? I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, like I'm I'm so content and so happy where I am at these days. And and, um, like I think that's one of the coolest things is is being young and being able to be like, um, oh, you know, like a friend hit you up and be like, hey, I'm going to Europe next week for two weeks to go film something. Do you want to come? Yeah, like yeah. you know, it's that those type of things oh, that yes. that um, I'm young. You're only young once, and you only get to do that yeah. once. And so I'm, I'm I really want to live that, you know. Um, yeah. So who knows? More power to you, young man. What was More that? power to you. Oh, More power you to you. And much. I hope that, you know people have enjoyed this chat because I actually think that you know what you've revealed to us right now says an awful lot about you. As I said, you know, I think your parents are fantastic. Just watching them on the TV, I'd love to bump into them and meet them. Someday, you know, they've obviously raised a great family. And, and just again, just tracking back to, you know, that moment and that. And, you know, please don't ever think that, you know, when you're in your, your hardest moments in training and stuff like that, that it doesn't mean anything because you standing up on that podium and as we said, with that flag raising and that national anthem playing, it's, it's an unquantifiable thing that you give us. And you give people such joy and such pleasure. And in the middle of your day, whatever else is happening, to stop and watch that on the TV it's a buzz, mate, and I want to thank you for that. No, thank you, and and yeah, um, oh, thank you very much. That means a lot, and and I want to thank everyone else for the support as well, because it means the world to to everyone overseas, and and um, yeah, and and myself, and and yeah, just want to say a, a massive thank you. All the best. Let's catch up sooner. Yeah, perfect. Cheers, Martin. Thanks very much.